it is another Wednesday, which means more recruiting news for men's basketball, including one prospect who has set a date for his commitment and another who included the Hoosiers in his final seven. You are Locked On Hoosiers, your daily podcast on the Indiana Hoosiers. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Happy to Wednesday. Sorry, I don't even know the days anymore. Happy Wednesday, everybody. You are Locked On Hoosiers, the only daily IU podcast part of the Locked On Network, your team every day. Appreciate you guys making us your first listen, wherever that may be from. I'm your host as always, Jacob. Today's episode brought to you by LinkedIn. These days, every new potential hire can feel like a high stakes wager for your small business. That's why LinkedIn Jobs helps you find the right people for your team faster and for free. Post your job for free at linkedin.com slash locked on college. Terms and conditions apply. It is Wednesday, as I said, mean we means we have a recruiting Wednesday show to get you caught up on the latest for men's basketball. We'll start with Jaden Mustoff, a name we've mentioned a couple times over the past couple weeks, months. Uh, I'm dating back even to last year, obviously as well. Who named? Uh, he named a date or selected a date for his decision. Mustaf is a number 27 recruit in the 2024 class, a combo guard listed at 6'4", 205 pounds, four-star prospect. Uh, he is at overtime elite now. He transferred there for this season, I believe. Uh, his finalists are Georgia Tech, NC State, Maryland, Florida State, Indiana, and Arkansas. The Hoosiers are in the mix. It seems like they might be on the outside looking in a little bit on this one. Uh, they're still in the mix, though, and there is a chance, and September 14th is still over a month away, and there are still things that can change, but uh, it doesn't feel like Indiana would be the decision if it was announced right now. That being said, he has said some nice things, some good things about Indiana. He spoke to 247 Sports about uh, about the schools and specifically Indiana. Uh, he had this to say on the Hoosiers. Mike Woodson was an NBA coach who coached some of the best players. I have a great relationship with the whole coaching staff. I know Gabe cups and some other players as well. They recently had Jalen hood Shafino who is similar in size and plays the same position. They got him in the first round this year. They had a great season this year. Their fans are probably the craziest I've seen that plays a big part in this my visit there was also amazing now that was back uh last week i believe he said similar things in the past about um the hoosiers and jalen hood shafino and i know we've mentioned it a lot every dayers will have heard me mention it a lot about jalen hood shafino and how big that was for the hoosiers to just turn him into a one and done and get him to the NBA and the part they played in that, obviously Jalen played a big role in that as well here on his decision. He had, he told two, four, seven sports, this uh, I'm choosing between these schools on September 14th. Uh, I'm taking a visit to Maryland. The first September 1st to the third, I took my visits to almost every other school on my list. So that point I'll be able to decide I haven't been able to visit to Arkansas yet. I'm not sure if I'll be able to visit there or not, but I talk with them a lot. Now, Peaks has it down to six schools, Arkansas, Florida State, Georgia Tech, Indiana, Maryland, NC State. So it is only six schools. I wrote it down, or I can't even count. So it is those six schools. Uh, Indiana, again, in the mix. We'll see how those things play out. Is a month a month still to to make an impact, but uh, the Hoosiers aren't going to get any kind of last laugh or anything. They already had him on an official visit, last word, nothing like that. Indiana uh, won't be able to get that, but they're still able to be in contact with him, and we'll see how those things play out. But one of the the first dominoes to fall in this 2027 class, uh, Mustaf also spoke to uh, one 
Owen three, uh, however that's pronounced, about what he's looking for in a program. He said this previously. I'm looking for a family-oriented program, a place where I'll be able to just be myself. I want to go somewhere I can be coached hard, improve my game, and win all at the same time. I think being able to play the one, two, or three at the next level, not being restricted into playing any one way. I'll want to play in a set system, but with the freedom to make plays. Look, you can spin those words however you want. They're kind of general and vague enough that they read like a horoscope where you're like, oh, that applies to me. It applies to Indiana. I can't imagine there's a, a, a program that doesn't really apply to unless you're talking like Virginia or something where it's like you have a very specific role and the offense is a very specific one. Outside of that, that applies to like everybody. So you can read into it. I think it does the, the family oriented program part. Uh, being coached hard, improved, like all of that applies to Indiana, each point he made, but it also applies to like every other school out there. Uh, his scouting report, just for those that might be unaware, I, I went to a different place to get this one just to kind of get a different insight. I stayed with one, uh, Jamie Shaw. He had this to say about Mustaf. Jade Mustaf is a big bodied wing who plays with a straight line burst. He's a jack of all trades type of wing in that he can handle, shoot, and pass playing multiple positions on the floor. Mustaf is a good team defender, rebounds well for his wing position. The jump shot needs work as it is streaky and a bit of a push shot right now, but he makes it some as a long arm 6'5 wing. There are many things teams can do with Mustaf. He's a triple-double threat each time he steps on the floor. Uh, his dad was a first-round pick, Jared Mustaf, in the 1990 NBA draft. If you're looking at Indiana and what they want to become and what they're kind of in the process of becoming, it makes sense to have a versatile wing like Mustaf in the fold, and you can see why they targeted him. Look, they're in the running, even if it doesn't feel like they're in the lead right now. They're in the running, so you you can ask uh, you can ask for more, but there's a lot worse positions to be in. We'll see if Indiana is able to kind of close the deal on this one. He's already taken his official visit to Indiana. Again, it's just going to have to be through communication, texting, calling, all that stuff that he'll be able to do that. I think we're either in or right near a dead period right now. I don't know how much recruiting is going to be going on right now. So it might not be till early September that they're able to really do those things. There's all, I don't know the specific limits on them. I know recruits can't come on campus uh, for the next two, two and a half, three weeks. So I don't know what the limitations are. I know it's a type of dead period, but Indiana has some ground to make up. We'll see if they'll be able to do that. Tyler Betsy, another familiar name. He is down to seven schools, and I can count this one. There are seven schools. The Hoosiers are included in that one. We'll take a look at the details, what he said about IU, get the latest on him. We'll do all that here in a moment. Let's talk about today's sponsor. We mentioned him at the top, LinkedIn. These days, every new potential hire can feel like a high-stakes wager for small businesses. You want to be 100% certain that you have access to the best qualified candidates available. That's why you have to check out LinkedIn Jobs. LinkedIn Jobs helps you find the right people for your team faster and for free. Uh, you guys know the deal. You create your job posting, uh, add it to your profile, as well as the purple hashtag hiring frame so that people know you are hiring. LinkedIn has a lot of simple tools is like screening questions that make it a lot easier for you to find the qualified candidates throughout the process, whether to interview or to hire. It's why small businesses rate LinkedIn jobs number one in delivering quality hires versus the leading competitors. LinkedIn jobs helps you find the qualified candidates you want to talk to faster. Post your job for free at linkedin.com slash lockdown college. That's linkedin.com slash lockdown college to post your job for free. Terms and conditions apply. Big thanks to you guys making us your first listen. Every dayers, we covered, uh, you guys will know, we covered uh, IU women's basketball recruiting on Tuesday's episode. We'll get you caught up a little bit with the latest in football on Thursday's episode. We haven't talked about them a ton. Fall camp is still going on. So we'll get some of the latest updates on, on injuries, on who's been on the field, things that have stuck out. Uh, those types of things on tomorrow's episode. But we're talking IU basketball recruiting today. Let's talk Tyler Betsy. 
uh, just a, a little bit behind, one spot behind uh, Mustaf in the 247 Sports Rankings, the number 28 prospect, a power forward, 6'8", 185 pounds out of Connecticut. He whittled his list down to seven schools, which includes the Hoosiers, also includes Duke, UConn, Alabama, Cincinnati, Creighton, and Villanova. Uh, but the Hoosiers among them, here's what he told one about IU. Quote, it was the coaching staff that really stood out for me. We got a good connection. It felt like I had already known them for a long time when I went out there. My family and I were all really comfortable with the coaching staff. Standing in Assembly Hall was memorable for me. I mean, that place is huge. There were seats everywhere. And when I went on my visit, they had a kid's camp. So we got to see how many people can really fit in there. Again, you the, the, the recruits, the kids, everybody always says, I had a really good visit. Giving that little detail sure makes it feel like it was a really, really good visit. Standing in Assembly Hall, seeing all those seats, he was standing in assembly hall basically empty and they can have a kids camp all they want, but there ain't no way there were 18,000 fans screaming in assembly hall for a kids camp. So he saw maybe a very, very, very small piece of what it could look like, but I can only imagine what it's like standing at mid court in assembly hall and just kind of looking around and seeing how big that arena is and imagining what it could be like. You can compare it to any of the other places on his list. There is nothing like Assembly Hall. There's very few places in the country, period, like Assembly Hall. It's uh, obviously a very unique uh, arena. I'm preaching to the choir on this one, but that's a very interesting tidbit to to bring up and to mention. It, it feels like it's a type of thing that's going to make him remember his visit to Indiana and help bring up some of those memories, which I think – it can only be kind of uh, considered a good thing as well as, I mean, the, this coaching staff seems to really make great connections with people. It's something we talked a lot about when they kind of swung and miss on the 2023 class, though it ended up good with McKinsey and Baco, but initially they swung and missed on a number of guys. What we mentioned then is that the, this coaching staff didn't really have time to create those bonds but they were really focusing on future recruiting classes and, and making those connections and those relationships and again now you're seeing it because how many times have we talked about quotes these recruits have given and they talk about how much they've connected with the coaching staff i mean literally jade mustaf said it in the last segment i have a great relationship with the whole coaching staff it's, it's the same sentiment time and time again. So that stuff matters, and you're not going to hit a, hit a home run. You're not going to land every recruit, but you're going to land a lot more of them when you're more personable, someone that these recruits can relate to, things like that. So, again, it feels like IU basketball is in a really, really good spot right now. And I, I want to say this now because – we're going to hear more and more about these recruits. We're going to hear more and more about how close Indiana is. And Indiana is not going to get all of these guys. They're going to, they're, they will get some. They will get, a, 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 it seems like they're going to get some big fish. But they're not going to get all of them. So what I would say is patience and know that Indiana can still miss out on some of these guys and be making progress on the recruiting trail they've made a lot of progress in that regard highlighted by tamar bates jalen hood shafino malik renew um mckinsey and Baco. i know that some of those have come in unique circumstances but this still matters and they're still getting these guys tyler betsy is a top 30 recruit number 28 in the 2024 class Somehow it almost seems like a step down just because of how active Indiana has been with the top, top guys. Derek Queens, Liam McNeely's, those guys, Boogie Fland, who we're going to mention in a little bit. Those guys Indiana has been really involved in, and they're all top 15 guys. A top 30 recruit is no, that's not a consolation prize. That's still a 
a victory, a, a grand prize to land a top 30 recruit. Again, we'll talk uh, the scattering report on Betsy because I think he's someone that we haven't talked about as much. Again, from uh, Jamie Shaw, one uh, quote, Tyler Betsy has excellent length and a projectable frame. He is a smooth shooter with a quick release and deep range. He is a threat off the catch with outstanding balance and a high repeatable release. He uses his length in the passing lanes with natural instincts, getting a lot of deflections. He can also move his feet with wings, staying with them with the lateral quick with his lateral quickness and length. Betsy's a good athlete, needs to continue to develop off the bounce, creating for himself. But he plays efficiently in the half court and acts as an excellent floor spacer. He is good in straight lines, getting to the rim on ball rotations. Would like to see him develop some middle game on offense. Strength will be a big thing for him moving forward. But he is developing into a 3 and D type of prospect that is so valuable in today's game. 247 Sports lists him as a power forward, but 6'8", 195 pounds. It's a type of guy, it's a type of forwards the Hoosiers have been targeting so it, it continues to make sense in that regard again this one seems obviously much further out he's still narrowing his list but that's two top 30 recruits the Hoosiers are very much involved in it, it's not gonna feel it's I don't know how long it's gonna be until this doesn't feel weird that Indiana is so involved with these guys it's not today it's gonna continue to feel odd that we're talking about these guys so many 2024 recruits that the Hoosiers are are really, really going all in on. It could be a historic class. Something I want to talk about maybe the end of this week, kind of looking at this 2024 class and how good it could be. There's a lot of projection. There's a lot of ifs, a lot of questions that come in recruiting, but I almost want to say it reminds me a little bit of what the movement was supposed to be, only this time it might actually be real. We might we might talk about that and, and rehash the movement. Something I haven't thought about in a while. Let's talk about a couple other small tidbits. Trent Sisley, Boogie Fland, both guys to that had small little updates. We'll get you the latest on them here in a moment. 2024 isn't the only class the Hoosiers are working on, obviously. They've been doing a lot with the 2025 class including with Trent Sicily, who is currently ranked the number 56 recruit in the 2025 class from Heritage Hills. He's a power forward, 6'7", 205. He has scheduled an unofficial visit to Indiana. He's been at Indiana a lot, which isn't a bad thing. It's just he has been at Indiana a lot. And I don't believe there's a limit on unofficial unofficial visits. And I think he's taken a lot of them in that regard, but he's taking another September 23rd. IU football will be playing Akron at home in that day, so I'm assuming he's going to be at the football game for that one. The Hoosiers aren't the only place he's taking an unofficial visit. He's also going to Purdue, Michigan State, Notre Dame. So there's a couple top recruits in that 2025 class that the Hoosiers have really – made priorities along the way as much as they focused on this 2024 class Jalen Harrelson Trent Sicily two guys that Indiana has really done a lot with uh throughout the last couple of years Harrelson is at La Lumiere this season transferred there uh, the number one recruit in the class the number nine recruit overall <laughs> the top four Four recruits and five of the top six in the 2025 class all are at La Lumiere. The only one not is Sicily at Heritage Hills. So La Lumiere obviously is going to have IU's attention. We'll see if they get more involved with any of those guys. But Harrelson and Sicily are two players that they certainly have put some emphasis on it and they've had around a number of times a lot of them unofficially, but they've been around, and that obviously matters. Mike Woodson is going to see Boogie Fland at uh, school, at his high school, in a couple weeks. So Mike Woodson is scheduled to speak at the New York Basketball Coaches Clinic. 
Now, there are some conveniences here because that coach's clinic is on Wednesday, September 3rd at Archbish- Archbishop Stepanank. I'm not sure if I'm pronouncing that right. High school just so happens to be where Boogie Flan is playing high school basketball. Now, again, that feels a little bit coincidental, but what I would say is Mike Woodson was the Knicks head coach for quite a while and one of the more successful, one of the more well-liked head coaches the Knicks have had in decades, honestly. So I would say that as convenient as this might be, and it's awfully convenient, there is like a connection. There is a legitimate connection there. Like that area still likes him, and it makes sense that he'd be speaking at that clinic. That comes on Wednesday, September 13th. September 8th through the 10th is when Liam McNeely and Derek Queen are going to be on campus for their official visits together. So a a pretty busy five days for Coach Woodson. You have the number six and number eight recruits on campus, and you're going to see the number 14 recruit at his high school. So it's just a a lot, three five-star recruits that the Hoosiers are are this involved in. I don't want to repeat what I just said, but that's three of the top 15 recruits, and Indiana is right there with all of them. One other thing of note, football recruiting, and just a, a note because this kind of came across on Wednesday as I was or Tuesday as I was putting the show together, Drew Evans transferred to IU. The program announced on Tuesday. He is a former walk-on at Wisconsin. I use uh, coaching staff, offensive line coach is obviously from Wisconsin, Bob Bostad. So I assume that probably played a pretty big role. He's a redshirt freshman. Evans is. It's unclear, at least as I'm uh, kind of doing the show, whether he will have eligibility this season. Redshirt freshman, I don't know how much he would have played anyway, but unclear on that one. It seems like I use offensive line has had some signs of improvement. We'll talk more about that later this week, but it's hard not to have just kind of general optimism during fall camp. There's some optimism about IU football. It's dangerous. That leads to disappointment, which is too often a a word associated with IU football. We'll dive more into them on tomorrow's episode. Thank you guys, as always, for making us your first listen every single day, including on this Wednesday. Every day or tomorrow, we'll talk IU football. Friday, we might look bigger picture at this 2024 class and talk about what they could be and probably as a result talk about the movement and again it wasn't something i thought about until today how do you avoid becoming the movement we'll we'll talk about that uh on friday so be sure you're subscribed wherever that may be youtube itunes spotify all that appreciate you guys supporting us wherever it may be from you can follow us on twitter as well at LO underscore Hoosiers. Thanks as always, guys, for tuning in, for showing that support. Hope everybody has a great Wednesday. As always, LEO.